Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to learn all about bases. Now I chose this picture here because many of the cleaners that we use on a daily basis are actually made out of bases. So we have three learning goals for today. To identify bases from their names and formulas, to determine the name of bases from their formulas, and to determine the formulas of bases from their names. So we have two different types of bases, hydroxide bases and carbonate bases. Hydroxide bases are made up of a cation and then a hydroxide ion. Remember that from our polyatomics list that hydroxide is OH negative. So there's an example of a hydroxide base. Carbonate bases are made out of a cation and then either a carbonate, which is CO3 2 minus anion, or um, a hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate anion, which is HCO3 with a one negative charge. And there's an example with a carbonate and one with a bicarbonate. So those are all different types of bases. So how do we name our bases? Well, you can write these instructions down if you'd like, otherwise just go through the diagrams with me. So you'd start off by writing the word aqueous, then you would name the metal or the cation, and then you would write the word either hydroxide, carbonate, or bicarbonate, depending on which anion is present. So let's take a look at an example here, NaOH. So we start off by writing the word aqueous, if we notice that for here the metal is sodium, Na is sodium, so then we write the word sodium. And then we notice that the part of the base that tells us which type of base it is, is OH, which is hydroxide. So we write the word hydroxide. Here's another example. We would start off by writing the word aqueous. We notice here that the metal is lithium, so we write the word lithium. And here we're dealing with a bicarbonate anion, so we write the word bicarbonate. And then finally, one more example. Here, again, we start off by writing the word aqueous. The metal, in this case, is magnesium, so we write magnesium. And we're dealing with a carbonate this time, so we write the word carbonate. So this is how we would name our bases. What about writing formulas? Again, you can pause the video and write these instructions down, or just go through the diagrams with me. So you'd start by writing the symbol for the cation, and however many you need as a subscript. You would then write the polyatomic anion, so either the hydroxide, the bicarbonate, or the carbonate, and write however many of those you need as a subscript. To figure out how many you need for each of those subscripts, you can use either the crossing over or the zero sum method. And remember, for the polyatomic anion, if there's more than one, you need to use brackets and then put the subscript outside of those brackets. So let's, oh, and then we end with the little symbol AQ as a subscript. So let's take a look at an example here. Here we have calcium hydroxide. So calcium is our metal, it's our cation. And so we know uh, that the symbol is Ca, and it, based on its location in the periodic table, it has a 2 plus charge. Our other part, the anion, is the hydroxide, and we know that it has the symbol OH. And based on our polyatomics list, we know that it has a 1 negative charge. So we can use either of our two methods now to figure out what the formula would be. So if we use the zero sum method, we have a 2 plus charge for calcium and a one negative charge for the hydroxide. That gives us an overall charge of one. We're looking for an overall charge of zero, which means we need more negatives. So if we have our two plus calcium and we have two hydroxides, that will give us zero. So that means we need one calcium ion and we need two hydroxide ions. So we can write our symbols here. Calcium, we don't write subscript one, so we leave it as it is. Since we need two hydroxides, we put the hydroxide in brackets and then put the two outside of the brackets. And then we end with the subscript AQ. Now we can also use the crossing over method. So here we would write all of our symbols next to each other. We would use the charge on the calcium as the subscript for the hydroxide. So we can write our two there. And automatically we know that we need some brackets around the hydroxide. And then we use the charge on the hydroxide as the subscript for the calcium. Now again, we don't write subscript 1, so we'll leave it as it is. So we end up with Ca 
bracket OH, close bracket 2, and then we write our subscript AQ. Let's take a look at another example, cobalt 3 carbonate. So here, cobalt 3, we know from the name itself we're dealing with a multivalent cation, and it tells us in the name that it has a 3 plus charge. So it's CO with a 3 plus charge. Carbonate is our polyatomic anion, which we know is CO3 from our polyatomics list. And again, from that same list, we know it has a two negative charge. So we can use either method. Let's start off with the zero sum method. So if we have a three plus charge and we add that to a two negative charge, we end up with a one plus charge. So we need more negatives. If we added another negative in here, another two minus, then we would end up with too many negatives. If we added some more positive, we would have too many positive. If we add a third negative charge in there, then we would get zero. So if we have two of the cobalt ions, and if we have three of the carbonate ions, that would give us zero. So if you do all that math, and this is a little bit of trial and error, but if you do all that math, you would end up with zero. So that means we need two of the cobalt ions, and we need three Oops, three of the carbonate ions. So we could write this as CO2. We use our brackets for the carbonate, and then we need three of those, and then write our subscript AQ. So this is the formula we would end up with. We can also use our crossing over. So if we write all the symbols next to each other, use the charge on the cobalt as the subscript for the carbonate. So that means we need some brackets there and then the charge of the carbonate as the subscript for the cobalt. So we would end up with CO2, bracket CO3, close bracket 3, and then we would end with our AQ subscript. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you identify bases from their names and formulas? Can you determine the name of bases from their formulas? And can you determine the formulas of bases from their names? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye bye.